Hello, I'm Troy Kerr, and today we're going to do a little oversight on uh, applications for the TK slider, uh, some of the things to look for, um, some of the uses of the different styles, and we'll go into the applications of using the natural balance principles to apply these shoes. Before you take the shoe off, always kind of look at the foot and see see how the ratios and stuff are. Um, you're going to kind of get a good idea. You know where the widest part of the shoe is. You can see where breakover is and you know where the heels end. And you can kind of pick out where these bumps are, where the bars end in the sole. And you can see this mare is about 10, at about 10 weeks here. And you can see that the ratios are still in real good proportions. And that's really important so that the ratios not only are good the first couple weeks, but they're good at the end of the shoeing also. That allows the customer to get as much performance out of their horse as they can, much performance out of the shoes. We don't want to have it where it's really good for a couple weeks and then the last part of the shoeing, the horse can't compete. So once we pull this, we'll pull this shoe off and then we'll go ahead and uh, exfoliate the foot and find some of our reference points and map out the foot. First thing to find is the true apex of the frog. Take your time here. Some of these, some of these dry feet can be a little, little hard to find. This you don't want to get, you don't want to get so quick that you damage the foot, but you also you want to take enough time that you truly find that first reference point. So a little time spent here really makes the rest of the shoe job quite. Uh, quite proper. Okay. The true apex is where the frog and the sole meet, which would be right there. And then at this point, I'll go ahead and clean the commissures of the frog out some. I want there to be a real definition between frog tissue and heel hoof capsule tissue in the back part of the foot. So I'm going to clean these out. Um, I use a loop knife or I use a right and left handed knife, whatever is comfortable for you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take a lot of height off of the frog, but I am going to clean out the commissure so that I get a good distinction between the hoof capsule and the soft frog tissue. We don't want to be, we don't want there to be a gray line between what is actually heel and what is actually frog. And sometimes with the, if you work on a horse that has negative palmar angle, that can become very deceiving where the two are separated. So now we're going to find, we're going to start exfoliating this foot. Always start in the quarters, toe quarters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find where the foot goes from being chalky to smooth at approximately the half inch mark from the white line inwards. I'm going to stop here. You can see how nice this tissue becomes. It's nice and smooth no chalkiness to it. That would be the sole plane that we're looking for. Once we find this, we're not going to go over it, keep going over it every time we cut the rest of the foot. Once we find this, this will stay the same height and then we'll just cut on the rest of the foot. That's a very important deal. You can't just keep going here and cutting over the top because you keep making this deeper and deeper. So now we'll find the lateral sole plane and you can see where how that is really chalky and as I cut each knife swipe see right there you can see that little space coming out that's where it's starting to get smooth that's all we're trying to find we're not trying to dig into it we're just trying to find where it goes from chalky to smooth so we've got the sole plane here and we got the sole plane here now we can just kind of connect the rest of the foot kind of clean out we'll go across the toe now Kind of like connecting the dots. As long as you get the first dot right, everything else will fall into place. You cheat on one dot, you're going to cheat on the whole thing. Okay. Now we found that sole plane around here, and we're going to mark it with a black marker. 
Once we mark this, we will not cut into that black mark with our nippers or with our knife. Again, that is the sole plane. That's going to be our reference point to how we're, the depth we're going to trim. The next thing we'd find is where the bar ends into the sole, which is here and here. We'd look approximately an inch back from the apex of the frog and mark a spot. And then we'd also look at the widest part of the hoof capsule. And this can be done easiest by laying your rasp down the center of the frog and marking where the widest arc is here and here. Okay. So we can see that these are a little further ahead than where the inch back from the apex of the frog and the bars end. I would not use these two points at this time. I want to take the best two out of three, or the best three out of three, but you can see these are different than these. So I'm going to make my lines back here. This would be the widest part of the foot, not up here. So we have a little distortion in the, we've got a little flare here and a little flare here, but this is going to be the widest part of the foot. Then we'd also look at where the heels end. We want the heels to end at the widest part of the frog or where the dimple is here. And right now the heels end here and here. So again, we're just going to trim per natural balance protocol. We're going to leave the black mark. I can't emphasize enough, you've got to leave the mark. That doesn't mean cut it out and go back and mark it again. Leave it. Now you may touch it just a little bit when you're rasping, but you can see now we got the heels back at a very good relationship to the widest part of the frog, almost in the same line. Widest part of the foot's here. Now we're going to look at breakover. Breakover should occur at about two and a quarter to two inches in front of the apex, or the widest part of the foot, I'm sorry. Breakover should occur here. We can use the, that method. We can also use our hoof testers. We can use our hoof testers and palpate back. And we just squeeze with medium pressure until the horse gives right there. You can see her move just a little bit. That would be the tip of P3, which we got the positive mark here. Breakover is a quarter inch in front of that. So that would be our hoof. Now all we need to do is level it up and prepare it for a shoe. Good thing to note here, uh, something that we've been looking at is that you can see the white line and where the sole actually touches the white line right there. And you can see this arc right here. Now that we've got that foot cleaned out more and got it level, we can actually see that the widest part of the foot when we do this, the widest part of that arc is right there. And now it, it, it lines up with the widest part with the, where the bars terminate and, and the inch back from the apex of the frog. So we're now we're getting a more true reading of where, this one's a little further forward, but it's pretty close. So we're getting a more true reading of where, of what's occurring. So sometimes don't always, don't always just jump the gun and go, well, this is where it is. Find the sole plane. Get your foot level to the sole plane and then see what else occurs as you, as you do that and then more things will be more things will be uh, evident to you and that way and then you'll never be too close and so now we can take and clean this what we're going to do is clean some of the sole out so that it isn't touching wouldn't touch the shoe but now that we've got the foot trimmed we can see some of these structures more plainly 
and you're not going to get into a situation where you get the foot too short because you're still very safe because we haven't even got down into where the foot transitions into the sensitive, more sensitive live sole. We're just into the functional sole.